Hi everyone. My name's Eric. I am a professor in the Department of Physics in the University of Alberta, and I'm possibly your professor for a physics class, specifically Physics 144, uh, which is Newtonian Mechanics and Relativity. I'm teaching it this year, Fall 2023, uh, and I run Section A01. It's the only section here. The purpose of this video is to give you an introduction to the class. This is the syllabus lecture where we go over how the class will work and a little overview of what we're going to cover. Uh, the point of this is so that everybody has a common place where we can come and refer to any questions about uh, course policy. This largely just repeats what's in the syllabus, so you can simply read what's in the syllabus. But first, uh, I want to explain a little bit about what this course is. Uh, a lot of people ask questions about why are we studying physics? This is the first physics class in the sequence for majors in uh, University of Alberta. It's also an opportunity to sort of see calculus-based physics in action. So lots of people take this class, even if you're not majoring in physics, to see how calculus, one of the greatest branches of mathematics, intersects with physics, one of the greatest branches of science, to come together to actually really work in harmony uh, to explain the universe. This is the beginning of a long road, but a lot of people have a hard time with physics. Uh, you, I quantify this by uh, doing a Google search about uh, what people hate on the internet. Uh, and you can look for the numbers of uh, search results for things that people hate on the internet and sort of regress that against the different disciplines here. Now, turns out a lot of people hate math, but I think that's kind of not a fair comparison because physics you see only in the later stages of your education, whereas at the beginning, uh, you see math all the way through, and there can be a lot of hatred. So given that, I really think that uh, physics is a surprisingly disliked discipline. And you might wonder, like, why is that? I mean, after all, we have some truly amazing and illuminating problems. Here's a situation I run into literally all the time. I'm in a van, moving van. I'm accelerating down the road. In the back of the moving van, I have suspended a bowling ball from a cable, and I really need to understand what angle that bowling ball makes with respect to the vertical and what the tension in the, in the cable is, just in case it breaks. I mean... Uh, or or maybe this never comes up whatsoever and the answers we get won't be useful. So maybe, maybe not. Um, is it really just to make life hard for pre-meds? Are we there to just uh, keep people from having a uh, easy time getting into medical school by making them understand some physics for the MCATs? Uh, also, uh, probably not. I mean, my answer to this is that physics is truly an amazing and awesome discipline. Uh, physics is the discipline of science that brought you many, many things. Uh, computers, energy generation, space flight, uh, chemistry is a small branch of physics, nanotech, if you want to understand where you are on the earth, uh, if you want to take an MRI, you want to understand antimatter, how to treat cancer, lasers, all of these things are consequences of physics. It's an amazing discipline. And we're not going to teach you how to build a laser in this class or how GPS works. Well, maybe a little bit of that. But, you know, this is just the beginning of a road, but that road has huge payoffs. It has many exciting and fascinating things uh, that's happening. But what are we actually doing in this class? We're going to be studying what's called classical mechanics, which is the study of how big things move, usually in highly unrealistic, idealized situations. Um, at the end of the class, we're going to explore the topic of relativity, which is the first hint that the world that we live in is actually just a thin veneer of simplicity on a beautiful, elegant, but hyper-complicated and non-intuitive universe. And so we start at the end of this class to get the hints of the universe being far stranger than we imagine. But 
<laughs> what is this really about? Well, it's really about learning how to abstract complicated problems and to actually execute mathematical models for them. Our main goal is to take complicated situations like this fine person bungee jumping off of a uh, high platform and turn it into a simple, tractable, solvable model. We are bringing mathematics together to meet the universe and using that to make predictions. So we are literally going to predict the future. This is the core of physics, which is the ability to make mathematical predictions about what's happening in any context in the universe. So really, it's the intersection of what math intersects with reality. And that is the discipline of physics. And it's weird because math is unreasonably effective at describing our physical universe. It's kind of amazing that we live in a mathematical universe. And if the things that we want to understand in the world as a whole all boil down to understanding and applying math and that application of mathematics is physics. So we will live and work closely with mathematics. We have the great fortune of being able to use calculus in this class, which was the discipline largely invented to explain how the world works. Calculus was generated by physics problems. And so here we want to understand how that actually plays out. More on that in the future. For now, let's turn to our class as a whole. Um, I have given you access to the E-class and I've posted the syllabus, but the most important thing in the syllabus is the stuff at the beginning, which is how to get into and contact me. Uh, it shows you where to find me, tells you where my office is, it gives you my email address embedded right there, uh, it tells you when class is, you might need to know that if you want to come to class, uh, and uh, gives you some sort of guidance on how to find me and make contact with me. Seriously, just send me emails if you have any specific questions about the class. A little later, I'll tell you about the Discord server. You can also message me there. Uh, so, yeah, this is great. Uh, what do you need for this class? Well, uh, I'm going to recommend that you get the textbook. It is not essential that you have a physical copy, but it provides a complimentary view of all of the material on the course that isn't me. Uh, there's a lot of stuff online. You can probably get uh, all the content there. Physics has not uh, evolved terribly much in, I don't know, 300 years, or at least this branch of it uh, hasn't changed too much. Uh, so you can find a lot of these resources here. I'm going to recommend you get the book because I'll be making references to readings and problems in the book. Uh, but it is not actually essential that you have a physical hard copy textbook. And can you blame? Look at this beast. It's huge. You can like literally murder somebody with this book. Um, but uh, we will have some quizzes uh, and stuff that will rely on reading and some videos like this that I'm posting and uh, also some content on the homework. So uh, you can come by a copy of it somehow and uh, that will help you in good stead here. Any edition will do. Um, uh, the, we are nominally on the 15th edition, but um, 300 years of not changing the physics too much, you can use previous editions uh, as well without much uh, pain and suffering. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want is a calculator. And we require non-programmable calculators in this class. Uh, there's a list of science uh, faculty recommended calculators. These are available in the bookstore online. Uh, they are surprisingly expensive these days, uh, like everything else is, given uh, what is at, you know what is fundamentally 25 cents of electronics. But um, we want a non-programmable calculator, which means if you have a beautiful graphing calculator from high school, um, uh, yeah, enjoy, uh, but you will need a non-programmable uh, calculator. Uh, you can always check with me as to whether a calculator is acceptable to use in the context of exams. Um, so go ahead, uh, reach out uh, if you have a programmable big screen graphing calculator uh, in a quiz uh, for the class. I will 
probably take it away and replace it with uh, one of the few that I have kicking around. Uh, so uh, yeah, so be aware that this can happen and you will probably want a calculator because people are not fast enough with math to complete it in the time uh, that we have with uh, for the uh, for quizzes. So uh, the other thing is that uh, we are going to be using uh, some mobile devices or computers in uh, class. Um, these are, you know, we'll use the phones and stuff to go ahead and connect with um, a free e-polling service that we use to do peer response uh, in class. So you'll want to have a, uh, uh, a phone or a computer in class connected to uh, the internet. Uh, we'll also have in-paper copies if you don't have a phone or don't want to bring a phone to class. That's fine. Uh, the general rule is if you have a laptop, you should not be distracting others with it. I, you know, love a good game of Hearthstone like uh, many other people, but it can be very distracting if you're sitting behind somebody who is trying to play it. So uh, uh, please avoid uh, distracting others. Uh, to facilitate this, when you're in lecture, I'm expecting that the first three lecture rows are going to be laptop free zones. That means no iPads, surfaces, uh, laptops, anything like that. So that if you're sitting in front and you are like me and completely distracted, if there's a screen anywhere in your visual field of view, you can sit in those first three, uh, first three rows of lecture and uh, avoid um, having too much in your visual field. Uh, next. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how the class schedule works. We meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the time that we spend in class is going to be things that don't involve me telling you the material. I'm going to be making lots of little videos like this where we will go over and give you, quote, the lecture material. But what happens in Tuesdays and Thursdays is we spend our time doing active things. We're going to be... Uh, doing demonstrations, trying to understand what's happening in them. I'll be working on examples. We'll be fielding your questions. I'll be asking you lots of questions. We'll be doing some worksheets, etc. So a lot of the sort of blah, here's a bunch of physics material comes outside of class. And what that means is that I'll be giving you reading assignments and some videos to watch. And generally those will be up early, but the, you're going to expect it to be watching them by class on Thursday. And so to enforce that, we have a little content quiz, which I'll give you. It's marked for accuracy. It shows up on this e-class platform that I'm talking about. And you can uh, go and basically use the videos and the book to answer questions on the content quiz. I also use it as a chance to ask you what you're having concerns or questions about so I can structure our Tuesdays and Thursday lecture. So in general, uh, we'll wrap up a unit on Tuesday and then uh, we'll have uh, coming in through Wednesday and Thursday, the time to prepare for the new unit. That's to do the reading, to watch the videos and to complete the content quiz. We'll come into Thursday, we'll find out where people are at, we'll do appropriate examples to address open questions, show you some uh, mildly interesting demos, we'll, uh, work on, uh, I'll ask you questions, we'll do physics in class and spend our time there. I'll also be giving you some homework uh, questions. These are not actually due, but they're just things that I think it would be really good for you to know how to do. More on what happens with that uh, later. And so this is a good chance over the, you know, Thursday, Friday, and Monday to really revise the material and kind of start to get it into your head. Work through the practice problems. Raise the questions. Ask questions on the Discord. Then we'll come into Tuesday. We'll do more. We'll do some examples and we'll do some demonstrations. We'll address the things that come up. And then at the end of class, for the last 30 minutes on Tuesday, we're going to have an in-class quiz. Uh, and that's just going to be a few problems uh, that we get. They are going to be drawn from those homework problems that I give you. We'll change the numbers to protect the identities of the innocent. Uh, we'll also go ahead and give you some like extensions or modifications for like one of the problems to see, you know, how far are you growing? And then there'll be a couple conceptual multiple choice questions on a, a quiz. Uh, so those in-class quizzes, 
are going to take the place of your homework. If you do the homework, you'll be incredibly well prepared for those in-class quizzes. I'll come in, take those quizzes, and then the cycle repeats. We wrap up a unit and start a new one uh, for on Thursday, and we continue our way through the semester. So we'll be operating kind of new material on Thursday, uh, develop it over the weekend, uh, come in, take a quiz on Tuesday, and then start the new unit for Thursday, moving into Tuesday. So again, we want to spend our class time doing physics, answering questions. You listening to me, not a very good way for us to spend time in uh, class. We want to be addressing your questions, comments, and concerns. Okay, so how are you going to actually receive a grade in this class? Uh, this is the grade breakdown of everything that we're going to do. Uh, I've sort of mentioned some of these already. Uh, for example, those uh, prep quizzes, uh, the content quizzes, those have a weight of 7%. You complete them online. Uh, they'll go to your, you basically get marked uh, for accuracy on them and uh, they'll cons constitute 7% of your grade. So they just happen online every week. Uh, there'll be a total of what 12 in-class quizzes, uh, given 13 weeks in the semester and I'm not having a quiz on the first day. Uh, those comprise 30% of your uh, grade and those happen every week in person in class. Now, I only am going to count the top 10 of those quizzes uh, so you can miss two or, you know, not, you know, yeah, have a bad time for a couple and it won't affect any of your grades. Uh, more on uh, other bonuses on that uh, in class. On uh, some point during the week, starting at about week two of the semester, you'll have a laboratory. It's a three hour scheduled lab uh, once a week. And uh, you'll go to the physics labs and do uh, physics experiments. Uh, those uh, constitute 20% of your grade. You'll receive a separate grade in that class. It essentially operates as a separate class. Uh, so we'll, uh, I'll just get a grade at the end, put that into my spreadsheet. That's how you get your lab grade. Uh, during class, I'll be asking you questions or we'll do some worksheets. Those things are marked on effort only. Uh, so if you show up, you come to class, you answer the questions, you'll get 100% on your participation mark. Uh, and so those questions happen during class. And then finally, we'll have a final exam, uh, which is 35% of your final grade. Uh, it's nominally scheduled for December 20th uh, at 2 p.m. And um, that may change. The registrar sets the date. I don't. And uh, we need to make sure that we can just have uh, the exam. Uh, at some point. So they'll work it out and tell us uh, when exactly it is. Usually it doesn't ever change, though, you know, this gives us a good basis for what we're doing. All right, so that's the breakdown. Your grade will be a weighted average of this, and then overall we'll take all the grades, and the entire class will come out with an average grade of B minus, which is the historical average for classes in the Department of Physics in the first year. This is kind of a department set policy that the average grade in class is going to be a letter grade of a B minus, which sounds kind of awful if you're coming in from high school. You're like, wait, what? No. Uh, but this is um, kind of the way the university operates. We are working on a different grading scale than you're probably used to. And so the expectations are that, you know, you're coming in, you're getting B minus. That's amazing. You're doing a wonderful job. That's just kind of where, like, you know, everybody in this university did excellent at high school. And we all come in and we're all sort of everybody in class who is getting passing grades in class are succeeding in the classes. So it's important to understand as you're coming into university that the grading expectations and scales are probably different from where you're used to. And it's probably also worth noting that right about now, this does not establish or change who you are as a human being. These are B minuses are good grades in our classes, and you should not set your self-worth based on whether you get an A or a C. These are largely irrelevant for the future. This is just the way we do things right now for our class. So 
Uh, just be aware that we have a slightly different context that you're probably used to, and the average grade on this class will be a B minus, um, thereabouts. There's reasons why it could shift up or down, but you know we don't have to worry about that. Typically, for a class, it comes out at around B minus. Okay, let's go over those course components in a little more detail. Uh, so the content courses are available through the eClass platform. We'll go over that in a little more detail in a moment. Uh, you just click on it. It pops up on your screen. You take as much time as you like, answer the questions, submit it. It'll submit automatically at the due date uh, otherwise, and uh, you'll receive uh, marks on this. So these are short quizzes. These are really just to make sure that you're staying up to date on the material, you know, uh, doing some readings, watching some YouTube videos, uh, Get that all into place. Uh, that's really the only reason why we're setting uh, deadlines. At the end, I always ask, what's some questions that you have? Uh, I want actual serious questions. I take and look for them and be like, oh, a lot of people need to know about friction forces. And so I use that to structure how we spend our class time. We are not going to spend time doing stuff that everybody knows how to do and is comfortable with. Uh, so this is our chance to kind of get feedback and for me to set up what class actually looks like. Uh, those in-class qu uh, quizzes happen every Tuesday from 11.50 to 12.20 p.m. Uh, these are There are no midterms in this class. Uh, this, there's just one weekly quiz. There's no homework in this class, just a weekly quiz. Uh, I will count your top 10 uh, as part of your average. So if you miss a couple, hey, that's no problem. Uh, you will need to bring to class uh, a writing implement, like a pencil or a pen, a non-programmable calculator, and you will get to make your own formula sheet, uh, which is just a standard size sheet of paper with whatever you can hand write upon it. And that means I would like you to take your sheet and a writing implement and put ink or graphite onto paper. A photocopy of someone else's handwritten sheet is not handwritten. I will take non-handwritten sheets and we will have what the authorities like to call a bad time. So just stick with a handwritten sheet. You get to keep it week to week, so fill it out and develop it as you go through the semester. Rewrite it if you want to. Uh, but this is your sheet to grow and develop. You'll get it for the final exam as well. Uh, but you should uh, bring your formula sheet uh, to class. You'll also uh, need your student ID uh, on uh, for most cases. Uh, all exams in the university require a student ID. So uh, just go ahead and Bring it. I will not have time to check it every time, but I will probably pop around and see, make sure you are who you say you are. Uh, okay. Uh, the lab is a uh, part of the course that sort of operates independently, but you must take the lab. Uh, you have to get a 50% or higher uh, in the lab. It's not hard to do this. Uh, People who do not pass the lab are people who do not come to lab. So go uh, do the labs, uh, complete the work there. Uh, you'll get a higher than 50%, often much higher than 50%. And then labs will be starting the week of September 18th, which is uh, sort of the second week of, or the third week of the semester. Uh, so uh, you can go up and your lab instructions will give you, uh, you'll, you'll start to receive notes about when your labs are uh, kicking off. You don't need any safety equipment. There, are, We have no goggles or lab coats or anything for uh, physics lab, uh, but if you have a laptop or a smartphone, you should bring them because they'll help you with some of the experiments. Uh, we use this system called ePoll. Uh, I'll introduce this in the first day of class. Uh, that's basically how we do our participation. I'll ask you a few questions each lecture based entirely on effort. Were you there? Did you answer a question? Good job, you got a point. 10% uh, of the marks are going to automatically be excused. So again, you can miss a few classes and you won't get uh, penalized. I also will have paper forms if you don't have or don't want to be using a device uh, during class. Uh, finally, there's the final. 
Uh, this is a three-hour cumulative uh, exam that will be scheduled during the exam period. Uh, you get your formula sheet, a uh, non-programmable calculator, bring an ID that I will check at the final. Uh, and we will find out when our final is a little later in the semester. Uh, the big thing that's important is you need a 30% or higher on the final exam to pass the course. And this is uh, like the lab. It is largely there just to make sure that you've achieved the basic learning objectives. And because, you know, it's very possible to just kind of sail through this entire class uh, and not, um, you know, uh, sort of bump along, but not actually pick things up. The final exam is just where I check to make sure that you've got some basics physics there. The 30% threshold is really pretty low. It's only there to catch people who have not really been with it through the whole class. But the final also presents us with an opportunity, which is what I call the ACE clause. The ACE clause is happens if your final exam is higher than any other lecture portion of the course, I will use the final in place of that score. So let's say you just had a really bad time with the quizzes. You missed seven or eight of them, whatever. What I do when I calculate your average, uh, if you had a score of 72 in participation and 38 in quizzes and a 65 in the final, since the final of 65 is larger than your quiz average of 38, I just use the 65. That's it. No questions asked. It just serves as a blanket minimum to the scores you can achieve in class. So if you miss a bunch of quizzes, well, just say, hey, it's the ACE clause. We'll use your final exam score. Uh, in place of that. Similarly, if you hate to come to class, because 11 a.m. is awfully early, and you just, you know, sleep through class all the time, that's cool. I get it. You're grown-ups. Do your thing. Um, never get a participation point? Hey, that's all good. What I'll use is a final exam of 65 uh, will be used in place of your participation average. So, important notes. This is applied per course component, so it's the averages, not per quiz, per content quiz, whatever. So you can not do sections of the class. I just replace it with your uh, final exam. The other important thing to remember, this does not apply to the lab. Operates completely independently, uh, and so you do have to go to the lab. But practically for this class, you can take the final exam, complete the lab, and get an A+. Like, that's literally all you have to do because welcome to university. I am not here to act as a barrier and require you to come and learn things that you can learn better on your own. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to be an effective coach for learning physics, but, you know, so your mileage may vary. And I want to make sure that that structure allows that uh, to happen. But this is a little stone that I saw when I was in university. It was in a building. Every time I walked all the way up to the physics building to sit through a 9 a.m. class, I would walk by this stone and it just says, use well thy freedom, which is you have open freedom for how you spend your time, more freedom than you have probably had previously in your education. And we're going to give you a lot of space to learn and operate uh, here as works best for you. And so you need to use it well, but don't squander that freedom. The responsibility for a lot of your growing and developing here rests a lot more on you than it did in a high school experience. So please use your freedom well, but we're here to actually help you. So that ACE clause will help out in sometimes, but it can be dangerous to rely on it. Okay, how do you actually get a grade? Well, your transcripts are gonna say something like a B plus at the end, and it's gonna give you a number uh, here. I don't actually know what the grade boundaries are because I can't get that expected uh, GPA reliably by just giving my uh, exams and applying a set of cutoffs. I universally end up screwing that up. Uh, so what I do is I calculate a raw score with a weighted average, and then I take this table of cutoffs here, and I look and I see if the class GPA actually using these grade cutoffs actually gives me 2.6. If it doesn't, which often happens, 
what I'll do is I will curve the scores in the class to hit that GPA by picking a number alpha in this formula. And so what it does is it does a sort of a transform of scores uh, so that people's scores will move up, unlikely to move down, but the scores will move up uh, and then be applied uh, to these cutoffs. So uh, if we look at this and we have a grade distribution here for, with this uh, range of grades here, and I calculate a GPA of 1.27, which is a way, way more Fs than I should, I'll actually pick a transform and those will slide the grades up uh, to give me a nice uh, GPA where the average grades are B minus C pluses here. Uh, so it gives me uh, a nice range. And so there will be this kind of weak curve that can be applied to the class if the grades don't actually line up here. I try to set it up so that we do hit those grade cutoffs, but as I said, I'm pretty bad at that. All right. Uh, so you might be looking at this and thinking, oh, well, this is, uh, you know, what do I actually have to do to actually get those high grades in the class? Uh, largely, I'm giving you guidance through the quizzes. The quizzes are what the final exam will look like. Um, I've also laid out at the end of the course syllabus a whole bunch of objectives and sort of go line by line. And I try to make sure that each of these learning objectives actually matches to something on the final. If I have a question and it doesn't meet one of the, assess one of these learning objectives, I don't put it on the final. I cut it off. I say, oh, that's a sad qu uh, qu uh, question. I'm going to try to, you know, work it in later. Uh, but the objectives are what are at the end of the syllabus. All right. Uh, let's take a brief excursion to the wide and wonderful world of E-Class. All right, so this is E-Class. It shows you a, exam, uh, a sort of a view. Um, let me actually look like a student. This is what you'll see. Hi, students. Uh, looks a bit like this. Uh, this is everything that you need in the class uh, broken down by our units and our sections here. Uh, you can go and look up that course syllabus that I was talking about. Everything that I've said is largely just stuck right here. Uh, you can, I'll post some announcements here. These go out to your email. If I've got to contact the whole class, that's how I do it. Uh, you can go and see YouTube videos. This takes you to the playlist where our uh, course uh, playlist is. I'm recording the first video now, so there's no videos, uh, but that'll take you to all of our classes. You can go and open up our Discord server. Uh, here's an invitation link, uh, a little bit more on that at the end. If you wanna go to ePoll, that's given right here. It will take you to ePoll. Uh, and I'll be giving you uh, codes uh, to access there. Uh, you can find our lecture slides in this folder. Uh, and then in the representative diagnostic material, I provide a sample exam. See, looks a little something like this. So yeah, you can sort of see the kinds of questions I like to ask on final exams. All right. Um, then you get down into uh, the class, and here's our first content quiz. So you can go ahead and pop, open that up, and uh, you'll see uh, it's due on September 7th at 10 a.m. Uh, covers chapters one and two, and the la videos labeled part one. Uh, so you can go and uh, read uh, and watch the videos and just take your content quiz uh, whenever you like. Okay, so uh, returning. Uh, to the final thing, which is uh, Discord. So I use the Discord platform as a place for you to reliably reach me and the Physics 144 community uh, via text, uh, chat, and video and voice. So we can use it for uh, audio, uh, audio chats, video chats, as well as usually what I use it for, which is uh, just text answering questions and stuff like that. If you have a question that you think is about the course material, ask it here. I guarantee you are not alone. Uh, they, everybody is just shy and doesn't want to ask a question because they think it might make them look embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. 
Nobody knows all of this material, even me. And so you're going to have lots of questions and a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, thumbs up. That's something that I had. And you can just have the courage to ask a question. Uh, go ahead and post it here. It's sort of set up in parts uh, and I log in. Now the Discord server, you, if you are already a member of Discord, you might have some crazy uh, awesome video game oriented name or something like that. But on the Discord server, we have a real name policy. There's instructions when you log in that explain how to change your nickname on the server uh, to have your real name uh, and real name and optionally first initial. I don't want your full name or anything that will dox you, uh, but uh, that's there. And the student conduct policy applies in interactions on the server. If you are experiencing any form of harassment or abuse on this, report it to me and I will relay those people for um, review under the student conduct policy. So it is expected that you will largely be civil human beings while interacting on the server and engage only in really sort of appropriate and professional science behavior. What you do on the rest of the Discord, that's up to you. But in this space, we're going to be uh, professional grown-ups learning physics. So let's uh, keep it to a, a, a good policy there. And if you have any concerns, please report them uh, directly to me. And if you have broader concerns uh, that you don't feel like I uh, can handle, uh, you should email the Science Dean of undergraduates, sciadu at ualberta.ca. Okay, uh, so that's all I wanted to say about Physics 144 and the introduction uh, to the class. I uh, hope this was a useful video and let's uh, go learn some physics.